Welcome into the scoop. I'm your host, Ross Martin, joined by Don Callahan. You're listening to Inside Carolina's The Scoop, brought to you by Johnny T shirt and Johnny T shirt.com. All right. Welcome into the scoop, the premier number one UNC football recruiting podcast. I'm your host, Ross Martin, joined as always by Don Callahan. It is Tuesday, May 17th, We're recording this Tuesday afternoon. You should be listening to this on Wednesday or beyond. Dom, what's going on, man? A lot of news for me. Okay, here we go. Briefly. I am, briefly, very briefly, I am somewhat lifting, and we have a new family member. Whoa. Is that Brittany. a kitty? Yes. Oh, a kitty cat. If you're watching on YouTube, Don just showed a kitty cat. Uh, yes. You're lifting weights. Did you just get off the weight? Did you just No, lift? I go in about, uh, about two hours. So two it's minutes. actually... <clears throat> Um, my daughter doesn't do lacrosse anymore. She mentioned wanting to do weights. It was completely 100% her idea. So I go with her, so I might as well lift. We, she has a uh, workout that her trainer gave her that she follows, and I just do the, the free weight portion. There's like a mat portion, and there's a, uh, a bench portion that I don't, I don't mess with at all. But maybe I will eventually, but, uh, but I'll do is the free it, weights. Is it- at a facility or like it's not at school is yes it? we go, we just go to planet fitness but he there's like a <clears throat> like a video and just like you know like layout what, what she's supposed to do each time and i just kind of follow along got it good so, news big news get that beach body into shape that's get right it. what about ross what's the ross nothing man nothing going on no new kitty cats just new children por- no new children just ate a pork sandwich pork chop pork chop sandwich um Okay, uh, we got you know, not really a lot of news here on the old UNC football recruiting front, uh, but we do have t- three big official visit weekends coming up here in May and in June. So we're going to try to record podcasts before each recruiting uh, big weekend. I think that's kind of the plan. So there is a uh, official visit weekend this weekend, and UNC has four players visiting. We're going to go through each one. Don. Jamal Jarrett out of Grimsley, um, going through him right now. Joel Starlings out of uh, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, he's a defensive lineman. Joshua Mickens out of Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. And the last one is Big Tree. Say his name, Bobalade. Um, yeah, so Oleotosin Bobalade. But he goes, he goes by-, by Big Tree. He is one of the... Um, coolest kids to talk to because when I first you know talked to him he kind of laughed when I said I I didn't want to butcher his name so he did pronounce it for me so I have uh, a reference to kind of go back to every once in a while but he said just call me big tree everybody calls me big tree and when you actually meet him in person you you completely understand I mean he's like not only is as tall but just looks like a strong like a tree awesome yeah all-time nickname there so we're gonna go through all four uh prospects that are visiting UNC this weekend and then dive into a little bit of the transfer portal. We failed to kind of talk about some transfers that committed to UNC a couple of weeks ago. So we're just going to get touch on that and any other transfer news that we have. Um, you know, Don has some talk about the potential wide receivers or, or actually the lack of wide receivers UNC is pursuing in the transfer portal. All right, Don, sound good? Yeah. Yeah. The one other thing, which I don't think we'll actually do, but weekly scoop went up this week. It focused actually on the 2024 class. You might be saying to yourself, Hey, we're, we're focused on 2023, the big, big things coming up with that class in the next couple months. But during that time, we start to actually slowly transition to the 2024 class. And, um, you know, during the season, that's the visits is what's matter with the 2024 class, because 23 class will be all but done, minus a couple of, of stragglers who want to kind of take the process a little bit longer. Um, so, yeah, so, so this kind of gives you a little bit of a primer for, for that class to get your idea of what's going on okay so no guests not a crazy show just a little bit of news to preview this weekend um and get you familiar with some some new names Man, i hadn't heard of three out of these four names uh as we go through the 2023 class okay here we go jamal jarrett this is a big one uh a in-state guy defensive lineman six foot six 350 and that's big out of grimsley high school same high school as myself and travis shaw a uh, four-star kid, ranked 274 in the nation in the 38th defensive lineman. Uh, Don, I know there's been some talk about his position over the last year or so. 
talk about that and then um, just kind of preview him as a player, his recruitment, and, and heading into this official visit weekend. Before I get to that, you mentioned guest. He actually would uh, <laughs> would be a great guest, and he's very reliable as far as like if he says, hey, call me at this time, he's going to be there sort of thing, which is not the case with most kids I deal with. Um, so, so that might be something that, that we could look into. Yeah. Um, although I don't think we've ever done a non-committed kid. Yeah, I was saying maybe wait until he commits. Yeah. Oh, you, are you giving away? You have, no, you have sources in Grimsley. Do you know something I don't know? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> All I, right, I, so to- zero on that. That was just if he commits, we should get him on. All right, go ahead. Gotcha. All right, so position-wise, yeah, I mean, so – the I guess the start with him is he he actually began his high school career at at uh, Smith High School mm-hmm. in Grimsley didn't get a whole lot of coaching you know um, I mean he, the talent around him wasn't very good so he had to play a lot of different uh, positions and um, didn't really get to settle in at Grimsley High School where he transferred a year ago he's got he's gotten a lot better coaching um, and it's been more need if you remember last season. Grimsley started with not having Travis Shaw early on. So they needed that big man in the middle for their defense. And that became um, uh, Jamal Jarrett. And then when Travis came back that, you know, he still was not playing hundred percent. So Jarrett just kind of stayed at, <clears throat> at defensive line. I always bring it up to their coaches. I said, what, where do you see him fitting at, in at? And they said, you know, he could be an offensive lineman. He just hasn't had the time there. Um, it could be defense lineman. So everyone seems kind of up in the air. A lot of people seem to feel like eventually he's going to be an offensive lineman. But regardless, this is a massive human being who moves so well for that size. And you take those sort of kids, you bring them on the roster, and then you just kind of figure out what to do with them once they're in, in your own practice. Well, he's playing both sides right now. Did I hear that correctly? So... <laughs> Yeah, base kind of he's not starting both ways but you know i mean they they have so much i mean they have a full roster I mean, they yeah. probably have 100 kids so so they don't need to go both ways at grimsley but um but i mean he practices both sides man it's crazy football has changed so much there when i was there we didn't win a home game in four years <laughs> <laughs> um okay so his recruitment briefly well the status of it heading into uh, obviously is big this is i mean one of the top recruits for unc in state and a big official visit because you only get one of these uh, heading yeah. into uh, his senior season. Yeah. So his um, his recruitment is kind of even though he's come up, he's come. All right. So he's come out with a bunch of different top schools lists, and even after coming out with a top schools list, a week later he comes out and says this school's involved also. So basically, where we stand, I mean, North Carolina is definitely in this heavily. Georgia is definitely in this heavily. Um, Clemson's involved, Auburn's involved. Um, he has, in addition to the official visit to North Carolina this coming weekend, he has an official schedule with Auburn for the weekend of June 3rd and Georgia June 10th. I would imagine he's he's definitely going to take all five of his official visits, but this is a kid that's kind of all over the place, doesn't like to say no to anybody, really enjoys the process, that, that sort of thing. But I think it's safe to say North Carolina, Georgia are definitely the schools to watch within this recruitment. Any uh, timeline for a decision? So he says he wants to take it into the season. And typically I don't buy that so much, especially when you're taking official visits in June, Mm -hmm. but this is a kid who really enjoys the process. If you remember last year, Travis Shaw wanted to take it into the season, but just got sick of it. This is not the case with Jamal. Jamal thoroughly enjoys the process. And so I could definitely see him taking it into the season just because he's not tired of, of, you know, the red carpet treatment and everybody, you know, wanting to shake your hand. And this guy is not as elite as Travis. I mean, he's ranked, you know, in the, in the two hundreds, late two hundreds, as opposed to Travis who was top 10 when he committed to UNC. Right. So he's just, but he's getting, yeah, but I mean, Travis was number nine in the nation. Yeah. Yeah. Auburn, Georgia, Clemson, you get all the big schools there though. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a four-star kid. He's in the in the top 247, or no, he's not in the top 247, I'm sorry. But he's a four-star kid, um, bunch of offers. Georgia really, really likes him. Has kind of, one of the, I guess, the pitches that has worked really well for Georgia is the Jordan Davis pitch saying, hey, other schools are going to move you, move you to the offensive line. We take big guys like you and we play you at nose tackle like we did with Jordan Davis. He's met Jordan Davis. That, that's that been really impactful for him. And that's why a lot of people view G- Georgia as a team to beat. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, this is go. a legit target. Yeah. You, you, they just don't make players 
that tall and that big that can move like he does. All right, right. Jamal Jarrett taking an official visit to UNC this weekend. Uh, that will be fri- – actually, let's do this. What's the official visit going to look like for these players? Um, arrival, schedule, et cetera. So generally speaking, they will arrive Friday in time for dinner of some okay. sort. Um, and then we'll stay until Sunday where they'll probably have uh, breakfast and then leave. In some situations, maybe they arrive later on Friday and they stay for lunch on Sunday. It's 48 hours, basically. Um, and as far as what they do is, is it's kind of like the, you know, the, the end of, of every official visit is going to be a meeting with Mac Brown, kind of the closing remarks sort of thing. But throughout, there's tons of, of touring. There's tons of... Um, presentations there's hanging out with your host which is one thing i think is a little bit different than most unofficial visits is you'll get a host you'll hang out with them friday night you're hanging out with them with saturday night and the crazy thing for these recruits is they're not getting into their hotels until two three o'clock in the morning and then have to be up at eight for some sort of presentation um but uh you know your parents usually come they get wined and dined and that sort of thing tons of eating when you talk to recruits after an official visit um they're <laughs> oh you got a cat on you now um, there are, uh, they, they will always tell you about how much food they eat, especially for a big guy like, uh, like Jamal. And we'll, we'll also talk about Starlings, who's a big guy also that, uh, um, they will definitely feed these guys. Yeah. And what's different is this is going on in late May, <clears throat> no home football game. Yeah. There's not many students on campus. The, mm-hmm. the camp, the city and the campus is, is dead. I mean, I, th- I guess for summer school, um, First summer school started, but it's not the big parties. It's not the mm-hmm. frat parties. It's not the bars rocking out. These kids go to bars or anything, but it's just different than visiting on a football weekend. And that changes things um, definitely for how this is what the social scene looks like. So, yeah. Yeah. That's just an unfortunate, I guess, byproduct of speeding up the recruiting calendar to where we have it. Yeah. All right. Next player, Jamal Jarrett in the books there. Official visit to UNC. All right, Joel Starlings, another defensive lineman, six foot five, three ten, uh, out of Benedict High School in Richmond, Virginia, ranked two thirty two in the nation and a thirty three ranked defensive lineman. Yeah, so he's an, another big guy, but not the size of um, of. Sorry, things are falling over here. I don't know if you heard all that. I did, I did hear it. Yeah, I, so. Cat? Cat just fell with a lot of things. Anyway, um, another big human being, but it, it doesn't feel right after talking about Jamal because Jamal is huge. Uh, but, you know, uh, Joel has been, uh, actually, I actually think it's pronounced Joel, has been dominating on the, the private school leagues in Virginia, playing against schools like um, Andre Green School, you know, St. Christopher's. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that sort of talent where it's not maybe as talented as some of the public schools, but each of those schools seems to have a guy or two to watch out for. Um, but anyway, um, it's been very dominant, makes a lot of plays, that sort of thing. As far as his recruitment is concerned, obviously he has the official visit this weekend. The interesting thing with him is, so he was a one-time commitment to Michigan. And I think he was committed to Michigan for about two or three months. Oh, okay. Shortly after decommitting, North Carolina fi- finally offered him, but they were recruiting him for a long period of time prior to that. And um, so that, you know, he felt like he rushed into that decision. And that lesson has forced him to, to, he plans on taking his recruitment into the season. And again, this is one of those, I know that you don't want to hear about two ex- exceptions back to back. But this is a guy who I, I, because of that background, I expect him taking his recruitment into the season. In addition to that, he has two of at least two official visits scheduled for the fall. So, which would imply that unless someone just absolutely blows him away, and even if they do, he could always, you know, change his mind, still take his official visits. We're looking at a recruitment that's going to go into the fall. Yeah. Is this the same school? This is, uh, Joel Starlings we're talking about here. Is this the same school as Chris, Car- Chris Collins? It is. So, okay, yeah. Um, Mil- military school, kind of military school. Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, definitely uniforms. So, um, yeah, I talked to him about Chris, Chris Collins. 
he knows of them. They're not, they aren't super close. The biggest connection is, is that Collins' dad is still the defensive coordinator at that school. Oh. So he knows Collins' dad. But he says, you know, as far as like pushing North Carolina or anything like that, that's, that's not going on at all. So I wouldn't view that as like, I mean, it's obviously not, not going to hurt, but I don't wouldn't view that as like a huge positive for North Carolina. Okay, good breakdown there on Joel Starling's uh, former Michigan commit. Opening was, what, what schools are involved here? It looks like South Carolina. Yeah, so he has uh, obviously North Carolina. Then June uh, 3rd, he's going to West Virginia. The two official visits in the fall are South Carolina, Virginia. The fifth member of his um, final five is Oklahoma. He has an unofficial visit scheduled in June. And then from what he told me when I went by his school, he intends on taking an official visit to Oklahoma during the fall my perception is is like i mean if oklahoma wants this kid he's willing to to pay for an unofficial visit in june and you know and if oklahoma likes him they're going to get that going to get a late fall official visit that's that's going to be tough to overcome also uva has been a team that north carolina has has been beating up on on the recruiting trail the past couple of of uh, cycles I wouldn't be surprised if this is one that UVA wins, especially because they right now have positioned themselves to have the final official visit. And those who read my stuff know I'm a big fan of having that final official visit because you're able to kind of combat whatever pitches other schools have, um, have already thrown at the recruit and then also kind of seal the deal yourself without having to worry about someone coming back behind you and, and refuting anything. All right. Good stuff. Joel Starlings out of Richmond, Virginia, a uh, breakdown of his recruitment and game as he has into his UNC official visit this weekend. All right, third on the list here, Joshua Mickens out of Lawrence Central High School in Indianapolis, Indiana. He's an edge rusher, 6'5", 225, excuse me, uh, ranked uh, 24-7 sports composite four-star prospect, ranked 226 in the nation, and he's a 22nd ranked edge player. This high school seems familiar. Did UNC get a player from there a long time ago or something? Yeah, um, I have to double check, but I believe that's the same high school as um, that that offensive lineman, mm-hmm. Coach Cap recruit. Um, oh. He ended up being a bust, but he was a four star guy, highly ranked. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Gotcha. I believe it's the same school. Okay. All right, Joshua Mickens. Uh, what's going on with his recruitment and his game, Don? Yeah, so he, for me, is the biggest mystery. For one, he's outside North Carolina's typical recruiting footprint. Uh, my, uh, my sources start to get a little thin the further away you, you, you remove yourself from North Carolina. But And on top of that, he doesn't do a whole lot of interviews. I think uh-huh. the only person he really speaks to is uh, our, uh, the Scoop podcast friend, Steve uh, Wiltfong. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, so as far as like who is involved with this, you know, just kind of from what I've gathered by talking to some sources and then reading up some stuff, Southern Cal, Michigan State, Purdue seem to be involved pretty heavily with him. And uh, Southern Cal seems to have made some impressions on him. He wants to take an official visit there. As far as I know, and again, a little bit of a mystery on, on a lot of this with this recruitment. I hope to learn more after the official visit. But as far as I know right now, North Carolina is the only official visit he's scheduled. But he um, intends on taking additional official visits, including to those schools that I mentioned. And probably there are probably some other schools that are involved that are, that are in line for it. The one item that I'll throw out there is that his mother is from the Tar Heel State. So that's the connection here. And I believe she graduated from North Carolina A&T. That's his mom. Yes, and okay. but his his fa- father Arnold played in the NFL, was a running back. Okay, what's the connection to UNC? Like, is there just the, just the state of North? His mom's connection to the state of North Carolina. Okay, not like a recruiter or something, or no. Okay, Joshua Mickens, edge rusher. Anything on his on his game or anything you want to share? Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's quick off the edge, long. Um, okay. You know, definitely has the athleticism and the the length he's listed at 6'5 225 definitely has that frame that coach Chiswick likes for that jack position yeah sounds like you just read off buzzwords to read when asked about an edge rusher <laughs> long i did, quick I, off did the watch, edge. I did i did watch his film 
I explosive, have strong at the, the point background. of attack, sets the edge. <laughs> All right, Joshua Mickens, Indianapolis. It's a long way away. You ever been there? I have not. Have you? Driven through, never stopped. Mm. Drove through on the way from Nashville to Chicago. A day to woman in Chicago for three three dates. We saw our, we saw our, ourselves three times. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Are you still technically dating her? <laughs> no. I actually did look her up recently. Did um have you ever like dated someone and then like you guys never officially end it? I don't know, man. I've had that happen a couple of times. I've always wondered if like they still consider me my, my I'm their boyfriend. I'm gonna have to write a book one day, man. <laughs> Seven years in Chapel Hill. <clears throat> I got stories. Hey, anyway, we gotta go to our we got to go to our last guy, right? Yep. All right. I'm going to let you pronounce it. Last okay. one. Don? Oli, Oli, well, don't we want to go Big Tree? We, we got Oli Tosin, mm-hmm. uh, Babelade. And we'll call him Top Big Tree. Lyman. Call him Big, Big Tree, Tree on second mention. All right. 60 to offensive tackle. Six, look, you know what? Everybody on this list is six foot five or taller. That's going to be a funny kind of group walking around, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're a restaurant, you're not going to be happy when they pull up. Yeah, that's right. Six foot five, two ninety six, um, from Damatha Catholic High School in Hyattsville, Maryland. Uh, three star prospect, five forty three in the nation, number forty seven offensive tackle. Uh, Don his recruitment and his game, please. Yes. So this is a guy who, as I mentioned, so he he goes, he attends when um, I think it was North one of North Carolina's junior days. Um, we spoke on the phone for the first time. And then at a, he was going to be at a camp. And I remember I was, the, the numbers were all messed up because they give us a, a, a roster of numbers so you could identify which players are which. And I remember seeing this kid who was really gregarious. He was huge. And for whatever reason, we bumped into each other, whatever. And I just have to say, are you big trick? Because Lord knows I was not going to try to pronounce his first name. And it was, it was him just be, and because he was just so massive. I am but big anyway, tree. Um, who are you? I am big tree. Who are you? <laughs> I'm big Don. So, <laughs> so um, I mean, this is a kid who has. I've actually because the the camp that I'm talking about was the Under Armour camp that was in Baltimore, and I thought he was unbelievable there. He was you know stonewalling every single defensive lineman that went up against him during one on ones. As I mentioned multiple times, he's massive and he moves really really well. So I, I was like, for sure, this kid's gonna blow up. He has to a degree, not as much as I thought. I think Virginia Tech often ran out to the camp and a couple other schools came, has slowly kind of trickled in since then, Penn State and some other schools. So, um, you know, I'm actually curious to see how this kind of lays out. Right now, obviously, North Carolina gets the, the first official visit. That's the first one I know of has been scheduled. But, you know, for whatever reason, Rutgers has seemed to impress him a lot. Um, Pitt's involved. He's visited there. He has some interest in Miami. Um, you know, Rutgers actually, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Rutgers actually scheduled an official visit for June 21st, which is interesting because I don't, oh, that is a weekend. No, that's, that's right. That's the final weekend. Okay. Um, and then South Carolina has an official visit scheduled for June 10th. So this kid goes to DeMatha, which is a, um, a how can we want to this, a, a challenging academic school. So I anticipate that playing a role to some degree within his decision. He, you know, from that one visit he made in North Carolina, seemed to make a really good first impression on him. So we'll see how it goes with this this official visit. Okay, and easy right tackle, left tackle, pretty versatile. Uh, I mean, it's so hard. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say left tackle, but I mean, you know, if he ends up a right tackle or even a guard, you know. But I think he's definitely he definitely has the tools to become that you know blindside protector sort of guy. Yeah, he look in pictures, man. He looks lean, pretty lean and athletic. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like he's not, he's not fat, yeah. you know? I mean, he looks like a tree trunk. So the big tree, it fits him. Like, I feel like if I ran into him, I would be knocked out and not come to for like two days. Yeah. All right. Great. Big tree visiting this weekend. That wraps up our official visit breakdown uh, for prospects visiting. Don, I'm assuming other schools are having official visitors this weekend as well. 
Is it kind, yes. of, kind of starting up now? I guess it's a contact well, period. All right. Yeah. So, so you could start having official visits in April, but um, and I only keep track of North Carolina's um, targets, but it's most of them actually are waiting until June. So a lot of official visits that that first weekend in June, June third, and then um, and then a lot that last weekend, June twenty fourth, which is um, those two weekends happen to be North Carolina's two big big weekends also, but a lot of other schools are um, are having official visits um, those weekends. Um, and one of the things I laid out, not in this most recent weekly scoop, but in the prior two, was kind of a breakdown of what what schools recruits have visited, North Carolina's targets have visited, and what official visits they have confirmed to this point. And I made it kind of point out just kind of the jockeying of positions as far as when you're hosting, what recruit for official visits. And because I always find that interesting because there is some strategy involved and there is some, you know, making parents promise, hey, we're going to get the last official visit thing that definitely has happened in the past. I haven't heard any, that story this year, but um, but yeah, so so if you want a good primer for the upcoming official visits, that would be good to, to review. OK, great. All right. Let's move on. After the break, we'll talk about transfers, anything going on the transfer portal, as long as a, a kind of a, a look at the two most recent transfers you and got which was three or four weeks ago. Um, we just haven't talked about on the pod yet. First, we'll talk about Johnny T-shirt and Johnny T-shirt dot com. Guys, a great chance for you to get baseball gear for uh, the summer and, and UNC baseball father's day gifts coming up in June. What better way to uh, you know celebrate your father with a sweatshirt, t-shirt, any sort of UNC gear. It's an easy gift for your UNC fan, dad, summer stuff, cookouts, ball sports, anything related to the summer get at Johnny t-shirt.com. And of course, um, you know, player t-shirts, the NIL stuff. You can buy those at Johnny t-shirt as well. Um, different basketball players, football players are selling t-shirts at these stores. Johnny t-shirt right on Franklin Street and online at Johnny t-shirt.com. Remember, Don previewed the weekly scoop. You can get that along with 10% off your Johnny t-shirt order by heading to the message board, subscribing to UNC and getting that 10% off discount code. Uh, it helps us, helps them. Um, tons of good hats. I'm just kind of looking at their website here right now. Um, so head to Johnny t-shirt. Father's Day, graduation. I know a lot of people have had graduations in the last couple of weeks and high school graduations are coming up as well. So um, head to the website and check out any sort of gear you want for um, your friends and family. Are you going to get my Father's Day gift from Johnny T-shirt? <laughs> Good joke there, Don. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, get out of here, play, um, pay a little bills with the national ads, and we'll come back and talk UNC transfers. Welcome back to The Scoop. I'm your host, Ross Martin, with Don Callahan. Hope you enjoyed um, our discussion of UNC's official visitors. I'm going to close out the podcast here. So I think in back-to-back days, I think that's right, UNC got two commitments from two Ohio State transfers. One is legend, it's spelled L-E-J-O-N-D, Cav- Cavazos. 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 Legend, Legend Cavazos. Legend Ohio Cavazos. State. There you go. From Ohio State, he went to IMG Academy with Armando Baycott. And Armando Baycott had like a very influential role in his recruitment. I was reading some quotes recently um, about kind of the influence Baycott had. Don, tell us what went on with this, uh, with this quick recruitment and the transfer of Legend. Well, one of the interesting things with that Baycott um, relationship was that they, they I think, well, one is obviously, or, or Amando is actually a couple years older, and they only overlap for like year max. So it's interesting that they can that they he's just one year so older. tight. Is it one just one year yeah, older? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because he's a this guy's a class of two thousand twenty. Baycott was 20, 2019. 2019. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, I believe but, that. But, only... but I think I think Baycott was only there for a year. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so that that's kind of my point is that. Um, yeah, the, the overlap was very small. But then again, IMG, if you've read or watched any sort of footage on just how that place is, not a whole lot to do other than school and working out. So I imagine there's a lot of downtime where you're just kind of shooting the breeze with the students that are there. Um, 
but yeah, so so basically, I mean, I mean, this is how a lot of these these um, recruitments go with the transfer portal. They're very very short, you know. Um, and he took the official visit. Baycott was obviously there for smart reasons, and he committed while he was there. I think he announced it a couple of days later, but um, I think he did take an official to Colorado. And that was really it. Yeah. And um, I mean, these things just happen quickly because, you know, you don't have a whole lot of time to make decisions. And uh, he did have, in addition to Baycott, he also was recruited by Charlton Warren. I think, what was this? I think Warren was um, heavily involved. I'm trying to remember how this transpired. Was he at Florida? I can't remember. I can't remember Sorry. what it was, but there was, but, but Warren was, was um, one of the finalists. And then also, I think, I think it was at Georgia. I think that's what it was. And then Georgia was one of the finalists. Um, and Warren was obviously actively involved with that. And then the other connection was um, Pat Suttis, friend of the podcast. Mm-hmm. He um, was, I think he, when he was at Auburn, I think they were, they became the first school to offer him and, and Suttis was kind of part of that. And so had the relationship there, but obviously the big cut relationship was, was the key to, to this decision. Great. Yeah. And he was a, you know, he was a four-star prospect, a, a kind of a l- lower four-star uh, three, five, two in the nation at a high school, the number tw- 26 cornerback and obviously good enough to, you know, commit to Ohio state six, um, one, one ninety six. He's been in Ohio State for two years, so he'll have, I, I guess he'll have, almost, I guess he'll have four years of eligibility. Well, he, he, he wouldn't have four, full, uh, full, four well, a, full years. It's a bonus oh. year. It's a bonus year. Yeah, but um, hold on, let me see how. Um, God, this is not great radio right here. That's right. Either three or four. Uh, three years of eligibility, because I think he has, he's, but he still has the register. So he has three he has four years to play three okay um and enters a cornerback room that has had tons of injuries um you had players like um <laughs> storm duck's been injured i think he was pretty healthy in the spring um god who am i missing that was injured they had a lot of injuries in the, in the secondary in the spring so there's always depth and it seems like unc's cornerback room and safety room has always been had issues with health recently so that adds just depth there and a player with experience, a little bit of experience um, from Ohio State. All right, moving on, Jacoby Cowan out of Charlotte, another player from Ohio State, class of 2020, um, played, uh, I guess, two, two seasons at Ohio State. He was a big-time prospect, uh, 24-7 sports composite four-star prospect, 163 in the nation, number 17 defensive tackle, Don, what happened to get him to transfer to UNC? Yeah, so uh, obviously things didn't work out for him at Ohio State. And, you know, a natural, um, I guess, plan B for a lot of kids has been just to go back home. And, you know, he's from North Carolina. His, his family still lives in the Charlotte area. So North Carolina made a whole lot of sense for him. He's a high academic kid. One of the things that we're seeing with North Carolina for these transfer portal kids is that everything might check out athletically and might be a fit for the locker room, but they don't have the GPA or whatever other requirements, academic requirements necessary to transfer to North Carolina. Cowan and, and obviously um, legend, there was no problems whatsoever, but Cowan was, you know, highly academic kid, So it made it easy for him to transfer over kind of sort of the same situation. He officially visited the same weekend. Although I think Cowan started a little like a day later than legends and, and, you know, committed to North Carolina you during the visit and um, announced it a couple of days later. Okay. And you know what? It's kind of surprising because UNC has a, a lot of depth right now at defensive line. Um, got t- tons of players. Yeah. They have almost like a pretty solid two deep name wise that, um, that can play. You're going to say something there, Don. Yeah. So um, well, two things. One, um, I think it makes it okay because like these guys aren't viewed as a typical transfer portal kids for, for, by Mac Brown because of the fact they both have so much eligibility remaining. They both have three years plus a red shirt. So it's, if you think about it, it's basically a high school kid who, you know, minus one year of eligibility. The other thing is, is I think this is what 
North Carolina is starting to realize for at least UNC and schools similar to UNC that the transfer portal is for them. It's not going to be a, we have this checklist. We have these three positions we need to fill. Let's fill them through the portal because what has happened is North Carolina, Mac Brown has not been, um, uh, been shy about the fact that they wanted wide receivers. We've been reporting that North Carolina has wanted wide receivers since December and how many wide receivers have they even had visited from the transfer portal? Zero. Zero. Damn. And it looks like North Carolina's not going to get any wide receivers. And the thing is, is, is that for North Carolina, it's the portal is not going to be a reliable means to fill needs. Yes, it can, it can supplement the, the roster, as you see with, with Cowan and Legend. But, I mean, if we were to rank the positions of need this offseason from the transfer portal, I mean, defensive line and DB will probably be towards the back, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, I, we were, we were going to talk about this. You kind of brought it up there. Um, UNC I'm has doing the natural segue. Yeah, it's good. UNC has six scholarship wide receivers right now. And then two more arrive in June Andre Green and. Oh, um, line. The dude from what? Virginia, the guy from Virginia. Yeah, Chapman. Um, yeah, Tayshawn Chapman. Tayshawn Chapman. Doc, Doc. Doc Chapman. Yeah. Would you call it Little Doc? Yeah, because his dad's actually Doc, and he's Little Doc. Um, so they'll have eight scholarship receivers when the season starts. They don't add anybody, and they I think they want to enter a season with ten to twelve. So yeah. they're they're two below their minimum, um, which is so it's kind of surprising. But like I think we talked on the phone yesterday, Don. The players that are in the portal, they're in the portal. They had to enter May 1st. So they know who's yes. out there, like you said. Um, so if there's not much action now, you know, they got to get in summer school and get the thing started. I guess some things could happen. But um, like you said, it doesn't seem like they're going to add anybody at wide receivers. Is that kind of what you're going with? Fair statement? Yeah, let me, let me, let me kind of just um, expand a little bit on what you just said. Is that – so for those who don't understand the, the NCAA rules, I definitely don't understand most of them. But um, – if you aren't in the portal by May 1st, you are not eligible to That's play right. this okay. coming season. You can still transfer. So essentially, whatever North Carolina is going to pursue is in the portal now and has been in the portal since, you know, for the past, I don't know, two and a half weeks. And there's been no movement, no, no visits, no anything. So it would imply to me, and I've double checked with sources to make sure I'm not reading this incorrectly, that. UNC is probably done with the portal unless something just pops up, you know? Um, I mean, you can get a waiver, but that's going to be much more difficult now. Uh, but um, yeah, so it looks like this is the roster North Carolina is going to head into the season with. So the wide receiver depth issue is not going to be answered. Yeah. Maybe they just couldn't find anybody that would make an impact be worth taking. And they're going to ride with who they have. And look, I think Andre green is going to come in and compete for minutes early. Um, they're going to have to get some people, some players like Gavin Blackwell and Kobe Passor and J.J. Jones to really step up um, to provide depth there behind Antoine Green and Josh Downs, which are really the two main guys with any worthy um, production coming back. Another point, Don, taking a player like Jacoby Cowan and a legend, uh, Cavazos. 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 You know, in a class like this, a 2023 class that is a little low in talent in state, UNC's not getting any traction, you know, a way to fix that is to take a transfer kind of in that class, quote unquote, that can play two to three years and gives you kind of an immediate impact player um, instead of taking a low end, a low end rookie, a low end freshman in that class who probably won't play, who will eventually transfer. Is that kind of how you see them using the many schools using transfer portal, getting a player who can instantly be an impact player who's already gone through two seasons of string conditioning can come in and essentially play two to three to four years. I think most are just trying to just make their rot, like make their starting lineup the best possible. Like, you know, Alabama, they add Jameer Gibbs. I mean, they're just, they're adding an impact player at a position that they've been able to highlight. Um, you know, and if you look at what, you know, Southern Cal is doing, I think they're, I mean, they're basically trying to assemble like all-star teams as much as they possibly can. That's, yeah. so that's why I think that the, these are different situations with Cowan and Legend. 
I think these are more of the fact that UNC is like, okay, we need D linemen in the 2023 class. These guys technically will be coming in as part of the 2022 class and they'll have one less year of eligibility, but you know, it still kind of helps us fill that need. Maybe not as long as we'd like, but still helps us fill that need with, with guys who have some talent, you know um, yes, they've been at Ohio state. And so they're, they're more conditioned and more mature than high school kids. So they're, they're going to, they're more expected to get on the field sooner than, you know, yeah. guys in the 2023 class. Well, yeah. I think, I think it's a great way instead of taking some low end high school player, take a, take a guy that's already been in college for two or three years. I think it's a great point by me. I got a question for you. Unless okay. you um, and we'll get so out of here. The looking at the wide receiver situation and let's say, cause I think it's a realistic possibility. Let's say no additions are made. You got, a brand new quarterback heading into the season, regardless of who it is, maybe it's, maybe it's two quarterbacks. What, how does it make you feel? I mean, do you feel like there's enough receivers there to where it's not, the depth is not going to hurt too much barring crazy injuries. I mean, I, I would feel better if you had two more, like, you know, I think they need another impact player. If they could find someone in the transfer portal. Cause look, what if jo- uh, what if Josh Downs or Andre- uh, Anton green gets injured? Mm-hmm. then you automatically lose your one of your two best wide receivers. Then it's really slim. So they need an impact player. Maybe they think that Kobe Passor or Andre Green or J.J. J- J- Jones can step in and be a really, really good player. But, you know, I don't know if J.J. J- Jones has that in him right now. Um, so they're an injury away from being super, super slim. But I don't think you're taking Josh Downs off the field. You know, he's going to be he's yeah. gonna play almost every possession. So, um you know, if you're going to get a bench player, it's, it's, you might as well use a scholarship somewhere else. Good question. Yeah. Uh, the defensive back, the corner, cornerback out, I, I got to mention was DeAndre Hollins, uh, Ladace and DeAndre Hollins. He's been injured. I know they've had a lot of safeties being injured as well. Um, Don Chapman was injured. I think Cam Kelly's been banged up all spring. So adding uh, LeJohn Cavanos has been, um, helps the depth there. All right. Anything else, Don? No, I am going to go vote. Okay. Yeah, I voted early, but like two Did weeks you? ago. Yeah, I voted two weeks ago. Okay. I always like it's like a thing. Yeah, yeah. I think like it's like a cool. ceremony. Do it on the day. Yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah. Um. Good job. I'm glad to see that you are 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 being a citizen of the United States, yeah. executing your rights. All right, guys. Uh, appreciate y'all listening. Make sure to check out Johnny T-shirt and GiantT-shirt.com and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast and check out Inside Carolina on YouTube. Uh, Don, thanks for your time. We will hopefully, depending on any commitments alert this weekend. I, I don't think so. And I think if, if you get something like Jamal Jarrett committing, you can't feel safe that he's going to stick to that. So, you know, you almost don't want it then if he's going to end up. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, we will, uh, check you out then. And, uh, another two weeks as we, as we progress through this summer and official visits, you've been listening to the scoop on inside Carolina.